All right, welcome back live, everyone. We continue right here. Bob Pompiani with you till 11 o'clock every night, 1035. We're here to take your calls, 412-575-2600. I set the table, so now it's you and your turn to sign off. Let's go to Barb in Mount Lebanon. Barb, welcome. How are you tonight? Hi, Bob. Great. Love the show, Bob. But do you think Josh Harrison is thoroughly dissatisfied that he could possibly leave? Well, he can't leave, but they could trade him, and he has intimated that if they don't want to win, that his preference would be to be traded. So it's up to, to be them. be traded. He makes ten million a year. He's a good guy to have on your team. That's actually not a bad salary. But for the Pirates, who seem to be saving money at all uh, turns here, that might be too much for them. So we'll see. Do you think he may do that? You mean the Pirates? Yeah. Yeah, I think at some yeah. point he'll be traded. Yes, I do. Okay. Well, I don't think that's the way to win uh, the World Series. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean. You know, at some point, I, again, my suggestion, if I were involved with advising any of these guys, thank you, Barb, for the call. Um, I, there's nothing wrong with being transparent. You know, there really isn't. It's actually better for you to just say, look, we, uh, we are in a situation now where, given the limitations that we have, <clears throat> that we're going to be uh, rebuilding. It's a word they simply do not want to use, and I don't know why, because that's what it is. When you bring in seven prospects for two established major leaguers, two former all-stars, that's what a rebuild is. Seems like they just don't want to do it. It gets in the way of the message. But honestly, the best thing is just to be upfront with it. The New York Rangers did it, and this is a bigger market, right, in New York. And they said, look, we're having a terrible year. We need to, to, to fine-tune this and change it. He sent a letter out to all the season ticket holders. They made it public. They said, we're going we're gonna to rebuild a little bit. Sometimes that's the best policy. Let's go to Keith in South Park. What's up, Keith? How you doing? Hi, Bob. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Uh, in my opinion, David Freeze and Josh keep their mouth shut because they're nothing more than journey ups. And I'm hoping Osuna or somebody can step up and keep them on the bench where they belong. That's all they are, are backups. Well, what's wrong with their opinions? If that's what they really believe, and they both cite that there's a, uh, you know, a culture problem in that clubhouse. Okay. Well, uh, I admire him, to be honest. Uh, it's not a good sign, though, it's, if your team and members of the team, and you know, look at David Freeze, for example. David Freeze has been through a World Series in which he hit some of the best, uh, I mean, a home run in game six, I think it was, to win a World Series championship. The guy has been through big time, big ticket games. He, he knows what it's like in clubhouses, and maybe he's taking a leadership role on it. Uh, you know, backups, yes, and you're right. If the Pirates weren't the kind of team they were, probably David Freeze wouldn't have a job here because they look for those type of players, aging veterans who don't cost as much, whatever the case may be. I, I actually don't mind someone speaking their mind if they truly believe it. It's better than coming out and saying what is not the truth. Uh, let's go to line two. Will in Carnegie. What's up, Will? How you doing? Hey, Bob. How you doing? First time caller here. Appreciate um, it. I agree a lot what you're saying with the Pirates and stuff like that, and I know a lot of people just need to quit going until they maybe do something about it. I don't know what your opinion is on that. And it's I, never tell, because... I never tell people what to do with their money. They can go. If they enjoy it, that's fine. Uh, people can sign petitions. They can do whatever they want. Uh, you know, I go to games because I like it. I cover it. That's what I'm supposed to do. I talk about it. We give opinions about it. Uh, that won't change their uh, way of doing business, though. And if you think it, do it will, then you're, I think you're mistaken. I hear you. And what do you think about the pen? Do you think we're going to make a trade or not? Because we're on fire right now. Yeah, I think it just depends on the, you know, what kind of trade. And thanks for the call, Will. Appreciate you uh, joining us. Um, you know, if you're Jim Rutherford, you got to like the chemistry the way it's going. As I said, 16-4-1, they've been the hottest team in the NHL, bar none. Sometimes if you over-acquire, you can mess up chemistry. Uh, so far, he's been really good at what he's done. I think the two trades this year, I mean, he got Oleksiak for virtually nothing. And I don't understand why Oleksiak wasn't playing in Dallas. He can move. He's big. He does all the things you'd want him to do. And then Riley Sheehan, my take on him is just like Phil Kessel. He left a place where maybe he was counted on to be uh, more of a go-to guy and wasn't comfortable in that. Uh, certainly, Riley Sheehan was under a lot of pressure in Detroit and got worse each game that went by when he didn't score. He's come here. And he's kind of under the radar because you got Crosby, Kessel, Malk, and all these people, and then Riley Shane just does his job. Uh, doesn't have to say much other than do your job, and he's done it very well of late. Uh, two more goals tonight. He's really good shorthanded. He's good in the faceoffs. He does everything you'd want out of a third-line center. So do you need another? 
Maybe so. Maybe you need someone else. Maybe not Derek Broussard. Maybe not Jean Gabriel Pajot, but you need someone potentially. Or maybe both of those guys. Maybe, they, maybe Jim Rutherford, when he says he's all in, is going to make a major deal. That would require, however, number one, bringing in a big contract, which they have a lot of in Derek Broussard, for example. Or number two, you'd have to give up a lot more for him than you would maybe somebody else. So it just depends on what they want to do. But I am with them in that, hey, how many times do you have a chance to get a three-peat? Not often, so go for it when you get the opportunity. Line three, Ken Clearfield. What's up, Ken? How you doing? Yeah, Bob. How you doing? I love the show. Thank hey, you very much. I agree with you. I agree with you, Bob, on the Penguins. Uh, everything seems set right now, but I would like Derek for sure. Well, I, I'll tell you what. He, that would absolutely tilt the, tilt the title a little bit in our favor. I know we're going to have to give up a little bit, but what do you think? Well, like I said, that doesn't necessarily mean anything in terms of if you bring in all the biggest names. We saw that happen here once before. I, I said previously with Iginla, when that trade was made, everyone thought the Penguins were in the driver's seat to win a championship. It just didn't happen. The mesh wasn't right. Derek Broussard's a very good player. Uh, I know that. Everyone seems to know that. But he does carry that high price tag. And again, this is a team that only has about a million bucks under the cap. You'd have to include some pieces of this year's team. You'd have to probably include... Uh, part of the future, if that's okay with you. And I don't have a problem with that, except they may want, you know, Tristan Jari. Are you willing to do that? Um, see, I like Murray and Jari, one, two, for the next decade. They could be here. They have Philip Gustafson, a young goalie who seems to be on the demand. A lot of people want him. I don't know. It's, it's whatever Jim Rutherford see. And I'm not going to second guess him because he's been real good at so far what he does, for sure. Dan in Indiana. What's up, Dan? How are you? Hey, Bob. How are you? Hey, just a quick question. Um, do you think that the Penguins legitimately still have a chance to win the Stanley Cup? Yes. Um, and I was curious about your question or thoughts on Crosby since he's been more or less of a secondary player nowadays when we're hearing about Kessel and some of the younger players. I'll hang up and see what your thoughts are. Well, I, I wouldn't look at it that way. He still occupies the number one center spot here. I think because he does what he does, and he has a nice relationship there with some of those guys too. You know, they're out with a couple of guys with injury right now. Kunackle's out, Hornquist is out. They got a lot of depth there. Uh, but he has seemingly uh, a good knowledge of uh, Zach Aston Reese. They play off each other well. You know, he doesn't have the goals. He has 19, but he still has 66 points. Uh, Malkin is blown by everyone with the goals right now, so he's been the hottest guy. But I would never look at him as a second. He does a lot of good stuff when he's out there, always, even if he's not scoring. So, uh, yeah, can they win a Stanley Cup? I would say right now they are the team still to beat. They're the two-time champs, and until someone proves otherwise, you know, it may come down to a second-round series for the third year in a row between the Capitals and the Penguins. And until Washington shows me they can do it, I'm not going to believe it. So, of the Eastern Conference teams, which do I look at as the most logical teams to beat the Penguins? I see none of them in their own division. I see potentially those three that are at the top of the Atlantic as nuisances. Tampa Bay knows how to win those games, and they got Andre Vasilevsky, who's real good. Then Boston. Now, Boston went through an entire month without losing a regulation game. They're a good young team with some good goaltending as well, and Tuka Rask has taken them out in four straight. You might remember that a few years ago. And then Toronto, we saw a glimpse of that last night. That's a good potential series there. So watch out for Philadelphia, though. They're playing well. They won again tonight. We'll show you some of their highlights at 11 o'clock. Let's go to Rich in Finlayville. What's up, Rich? Hi, Bob. Hey, Hi. Uh, I have three words to say about the pirate situation. Okay. They're clean, so relax. Yeah, I, I have my hand on the trigger here just in case, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a Washington wild thing. Well, if you like baseball, give them a try. Well, listen, you should still go to PNC Park and see some good baseball. And I'm still, you know, hopefully we'll see some of these guys that they've brought in do what the Pirates seemingly think they're going to do. But anytime you deal with prospects, to me, it is a slippery slope, especially a lot of them. Uh, look, we saw what Drew Hutchison was. He's no longer with the organization, and everyone said he was going to be in the starting rotation last year. Go back and look at some of the comments the Pirates have made over the years with some of these guys. Where is Tyler Glass now? Is he ready to be anything that they thought he could be? The Pirates resisted trading pieces back then when they were prospects, and they had nice resumes in terms of prospects and, and leverage. They didn't want to trade any of them. They could have and added on to a 98-win season. Now... What is Tyler Glass now? It's up for him. It's time. You know, you got to start putting some numbers out there. And if you don't, that's the problem with all these prospects. They, they acquired, I think, seven guys in the two trades for Colin McCutcheon. And I don't think any one of them is in the top one rankings. I'm not sure how all that works. We'll see. But 
Uh, they're hoping on a lot of guys stepping in right now and making a difference. We'll see how it goes. We got Ryan, Ernie, Rick, and Mike all on the line. We'll get to your calls next right here live on Pittsburgh CW.